My mom personally judged that person is not really in a good economic situation. Oh, for our room, like yeah. hotel room, so I needed to sleep in my mother's bed together with my mom. Uh -huh. So <laughs> this is the Ellie and Lee show. show. For today's video, we're gonna talk about agreeableness. Ah, okay. The one that we kind of differ the, a lot in. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, you are low in agreeableness, which mm -hmm. means you are disagreeable. Yeah. By the definition, mm -hmm. I just thought agreeableness is someone who agrees a lot to other people. Yeah, yeah. And disagreeableness just simply disagree a lot with other people. Mm. It's okay. yeah, it's kind of a simplistic definition for it. According to the understand myself.com agreeableness is divided into two factors first one compassion and second one politeness mm. compassion is like when people go out of their way to help someone else mm -hmm. you know so they kind of also take on the emotional yeah. pains of others that's me mm. <laughs> so it's like so from what I'm reading, it's saying that it also having sensitivity and, you know, fairness and justice as well. Mm. If it's moderate, I think it's good. It's needed in the society. Yeah. But yeah. if it's too high, then it might be painful for that person. Yeah. Because they have their life, but they put too much their time or emotions to others. Yeah, it might not be best. Yeah, I think if you're too compassionate, then maybe people can take advantage of you mm. because you're so willing to help other people that you don't really consider the time for you to rest or that sort of thing. I used to be in high compassion field. Mm -hmm. It was what made me painful. So let's say when I was in university, mm. so there was an English class and someone asked me to print their stuff. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal, so I could do it. But I realized that there were so many grammatical errors. Uh, so I added all and then printed out. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, because my computer was American version, so they mm. had the software. And as soon as I just opened that file up, there were so many red and blue line underneath uh, the <laughs> words and things. So I did it. And I realized that that's not really usual action for people to take because mm. that's not my work. It's too much to do that for like other people. Yeah. But I felt so uncomfortable just sleeping without fixing problems. Oh, okay. Now I can set the line. These days I prefer not to do those kind of things. Yeah, I would have just uh, printed it out and said, oh, there's a whole bunch of errors. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it before. I was too kind, I guess. Yeah, too compassionate, maybe, yeah. Mm, too compassionate. Mm. And also, mm -hmm. there was another example of my mother. Yeah. We went to America as a trip. Yeah. We were in a package trip, so there were some other Koreans too in the group. Uh, so one person. My mom personally judged that person is not really in a good economic situation. Oh, for our room, like yeah. hotel room, so I needed to sleep in my mother's bed together with my mom. Uh -huh. So <laughs> that's not really mm, normal to do for people. Yeah, I guess your mother's kind of compassionate as well. So yeah, just not too good. <laughs> mm. It's good to set a boundary between you and others. Yeah, I think so. That's really important. Because sometimes people that, let's say they less compassionate, maybe they don't understand that, mm -hmm. you know, they're putting so much pressure on you. That's kind of where you get the case of people getting taken advantage of. It's not necessarily that they're doing it as a means of manipulating you to do stuff for mm -hmm. them. It could just mm -hmm. be like, oh yeah, she usually helps out. So therefore, I don't really put much mm -hmm. attention to it. Yeah, so politeness is mm -hmm. basically like having good manners or etiquette. Mm -hmm. Doing things not mm -hmm. to offend others. Not to offend others. Yeah. So then even though I scored low on agreeableness, <laughs> like mm -hmm. my compassion is really low, but then my politeness is slightly above high. my compassion. No, not high. You're polite in general. To a certain degree. You're polite to public, but not to a person. 
Yeah, because I prefer to just have a straightforward conversation. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So with me, yeah, I don't really like beating around the bush. So politeness as your etiquette, mm -hmm. you are really high, in my opinion. No. But you are <laughs> etiquette. Okay. No? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so those two factors from the Jordan Peterson website. Yeah. Let's get into the book. So this book gives really interesting experiments. The first experiment was about the chimps. So comparing chimps to people. So let's say I'm really hungry and a guy in front of me also seem really hungry. And then there is two lever in front of me. Mm -hmm. And the first lever, if I pull that lever, then the food is provided only my side. But the second lever for both sides. Yeah. Which lever would you pull? Well, it's kind of obvious. Which? Well, as long as there's no negative consequences <laughs> to me, then I'd pull the one that gives both people. So that's how usual people react mm. to this experiment. Mm -hmm. But the chimps, so they just pull whatever they want to pull. Ah, okay. Well, I guess it's because they're not aware of the levers actually do. Like, they only understand that it gives them food. So, like, their focus is on the food. Uh, yeah, that might be. But in the book, how they explained this phenomenon yeah. was theory of mind. So, mentalizing and empathizing. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe. So we can mentalize, can understand other feeling, how they might think. When I see the person in front of me mm. starving, I assume that this person might feel hunger right now. That's mentalizing. Mm. And then emphasizing is like, if it's possible, I would like to give him food. Oh, okay. There was actually a, a funny reaction my friend had. So I'm not sure if it's oh. about mentalizing or not. But like, mm -hmm. whenever we used to watch, you know, those compilation videos of like fails. So like people oh. fall, falling and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Whenever yeah. he saw like someone that may <laughs> have broken a leg or an arm or something like that, he would like uh -huh. immediately react to it, like holding his arm or holding his leg or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to laugh more at his reaction <laughs> than anything else. Uh -huh. So we actually watched it together too. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I was angry at you because you left? Yeah, because it's funny. I know that video was supposed to make you laugh. Yeah. But I felt like, yeah, that person is in pain. Yeah, and but how if you... can you laugh? <laughs> if you do stupid things, then expect stupid consequences. Well, anyway. Yeah, so the other aspect of it, though, that I was interested in is that you find a lot of uh, disagreeable people. Mm -hmm. They tend to be able to, like, move higher up in a company. So those people that are like managers or CEOs or even those mm -hmm. that end up getting a raise after a year or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. tend to be more disagreeable for the reason mm -hmm. being that they can negotiate their side or their point of view, why they should get a raise or something like that. If you care too much about others' feelings, mm -hmm. you're in the meeting with your boss and mm -hmm. now you're explaining why your pain needs to get raised. Mm -hmm. And then if you consider your boss mind, you start to lose confidence yeah. saying those kind of things. But it's not only so, that though, because it's like, mm -hmm. even for you to get into the meeting with your boss might be difficult. Because yeah. like, you might look at him and he'll be busy most of the time. Then you'll be like, oh, I don't want to disturb him. You know, he looks, That's he's me. really busy. <laughs> well, then you're not going to get a raise. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to work those kinds of jobs. Mm. Even in the book, mm -hmm. it was kind of similar cases. Yeah. There was a agreeable case. Yeah. She often yelled her career over relationship. She couldn't really concentrate on her job. Yeah, yeah. Which can lead to not really good performance on her job. Mm -hmm. And then the second case was a guy with disagreeableness. Yeah. He's often hostile to colleagues mm -hmm. and people. Yeah. Also, how he described his parents was that people who don't really have qualification mm -hmm. to raise children. Yeah, he saw them in a negative way. Mm. But then that could also be that that guy is kind of close-minded. 
maybe. Mm. In his case, mm -hmm. he didn't really care about his relationship and he likes to accomplish his own work. But then, yeah, that's where I think the balance needs to come in because depending on the kind of job you have, you know, you're going to be dealing with people to a varying degree, right? Mm -hmm. You know, how you interact with them is going to either create business for you or you're going to lose customers. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you'd want to have a disagreeable yeah. person, you know, working <laughs> in a customer facing position because then like whatever the customer talks about or asks, <laughs> then they'll be like, no, you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way it needs to be done or something like that yeah balance is important because mm. i think in all cases of these traits that we'll be going through mm -hmm. like we'll find that mm -hmm. in the book it shows you the extremes and things like that but obviously having a good balance is is probably worthwhile and then at least for us once we did the test we kind of had an idea of where we could improve on yeah like i'd like to say that i've become slightly more agreeable Mm -hmm. You are. Yeah. So it's good to know your personality again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And work on it. It's just a matter of self-improvement, I guess. Mm, I'm pretty sure we can do. I want to be more disagreeable, though. Yeah, I think so. For people that are agreeable, you know, there's situations where it's worth practicing mm -hmm. maybe methods of being more disagreeable. So like the case of someone working at a company, you know, they might be a really good employee and get along with their colleagues. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes down to getting that pay raise, you know, that's where they need to, you know, learn a bit of yeah. disagreeable yeah. things they can do. And like, that's the thing, when you say it disagreeable, it sounds like you basically need to go in and demand that you get paid extra or whatever. <laughs> but it's not the case. It's just, can you yeah. stand up more for what you are thinking or what you believe in? For survival. Mm. Please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps us out. Thanks for watching. See you.